something later. But at the same time, um, you know, it's nice that everybody gets a little bit of a chance to come in. Um, so let's see, how many we have? One, two, three, four. Pretty good. Well, I, I'm always thinking of the big N instead of the, this group. Okay. Half of them, right? More? Oh, okay. All right. Um, I, it's the time of the day that you think, okay, it's the end of the day. Maybe I should have a beer. <laughs> Maybe I should um, be relaxing or something. Um, but we've got great things to talk about um, today and very, very, very happy that you guys are here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen and um, go through, uh, you know, some really great points um, about how, you know, we call it, we know a thing or two or because we've seen a thing or two. Have you ever heard that phrase? Um, <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's go for it and tell me, um, make sure that, can you see my screen? Okay, so yes, indeed, I stole it from Farmers Insurance, um, and I, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Um, so basically, the premise of what I'm going to tell you today has to do with, I've been around a long time here, so um, I've seen a lot of things happen with folks who are um, going after their MS and doctoral degrees. And we want to help you out um, by kind of, you know, letting you know, hey, these are some of the pitfalls um, and speed bumps um, that we've seen and anything we can do to, um, to help you would, you know, be, be a good thing. So whatever the guy's name is, I can't remember, but you should equate me to him. I've seen a thing or two. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Um, I, I'm Chris Tisch. I'm the Assistant Dean for Student and Alumni Affairs. And I've, um, as you may remember, if you, if, at the, if you were at the last presentation, I've been here for almost 26 years. So I've seen the college grow up and I've seen a lot of students um, come through. In fact, um, right now, um, our our student body looks like this. There's 582 graduate students. Of course, that number is just a little bit, you know, it's still in flex, some flux. Um, and um, because we don't always know that everybody said they're going to come, comes, etc. But as you can see, um, we're hanging right around 600 um, strong for all of our, our graduate students. Um, you guys, um, the doctoral students join 88 continuing students to make a total of 109 of you. And um, four new MS students uh, join 23 continuing students, 27 of you. So, and then we've got the uh, campus-based MPH is um, a little bit less than we normally have. We had a huge group graduate um, and so we're at 232, and our online MPH is growing as we speak. Um, the, the basically the um, the online MPH program is uh, still admitting. Um, so I'm going to go to this. Something like that. All right. Um, our alumni, our numbers are, there are 2,144 2, graduate degrees have been awarded. And whoops, I'm trying, you know what I'm going to do here? I am going to move you guys around here. Um, so as you can see, we've graduated a number of MS students and um, 75 PhD students, 36 DRPH. So people who come in actually get out, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, 
And so on my watch, all of these people have um, graduated. And, you know, 197 of the MS and doctoral graduates and 2,000 MPH graduates, at least, you know, around 2,000, hundreds of undergrads too. Um, so, you know, what, what Michael and I have said over the last couple of years, especially, is that we keep seeing certain things that happen um, to, you know, the majority of our students, and we want to draw that to your attention, kind of give you some some uh, strategies for success. And, um, you know, and if you all, you know, if you have a question or anything, please uh, just unmute yourself and sort of say, Chris, can I ask the question? I'm not very formal in that regard. And I think there's a small enough group here that we could benefit from that if you want to. Okay, so the thing to, to remember about each of you, huh, you know, the joke about everybody's a snowflake and everybody's unique, etc. Everybody graduated, everybody, you know, was unique, but everyone um, resulted in a graduation. That, and so what does that mean to us? It means that, um, first of all, get it, you know, think about it this way. You may be talking to someone whose background is very much like yours and um or you know you did the same program and you had the same kind of job ahead of time and etc and you think man just like this person but you're not so even if you um are thinking okay i'm gonna probably do exactly pretty much the same thing as that other person it doesn't always work that way and so um you know in in regards to that is to remember that your situation is absolutely unique and um, the you may be thinking I'm just like somebody else and the faculty may be thinking you're just like somebody else but they um, they are always different and so here's our common potholes and speed bumps in pursuit of an academic degree and how they manifest themselves in our students oh and by the way, the passport, passport code is five. Everybody got that five. Okay, so our first pitfall that happens right away when a lot of people come in to, um, to a new program or into new, you know, coming back to grad school is like, oh my gosh, I've got to, you know, work really hard and, and get ahead of, Get ahead in everything and 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 i've got to study so hard um, that you fail to make connections or to get involved and clearly right now um, it's really hard to get involved it's really difficult to get involved with the school it's difficult to get involved with your your peeps it's all kinds of difficult but we're trying you know we are trying to think of ways to connect you all in different ways um, and we very much, um, if you've got, if you've got some ideas on how to do that, please let us know because we, we, um, want to help in that regard. Um, at the same time, it's probably easier to study when you don't have to run the campus and things like that. So one way to look at it, I guess. So what are the strategies for success in this regard? Well, engage. And, and, and what does that mean? Well, uh, networking, of course, any of you guys who've already been working in public health, you know that it, that is the, the key thing that you do in public health is network, 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 and you do it some more. And you find yourself in different groups of people, different opportunities, all kinds of things. Same is true in a school. Um, you're, you guys, everybody in this Zoom room comes from, you know, circumstances that differ from the next person. And, um, and then you've got the faculty who um, all have, you know, interesting stories or sometimes not even that interesting, but they, they have areas of expertise. And, um, and this is what we want to suggest to you is that you get involved in college and university committees. 
um, community events. Hard to do right now during a pandemic, but you know, I we start we're starting to see some of that crack away. People are starting, you know, if you notice the the numbers in Pima County are starting to stabilize a little bit. So as we were saying today, we should bet on the day that um, that everybody comes back to school or, you know, pick some marker in real life, in, in regular life, and see when that's going to happen. We just couldn't think of what the prize would be if you won. So if you can think of a good prize there, too. Okay. Um, so another pitfall at the beginning. You all, when you did your application, you filled out, you know, you, you did a personal statement, you probably submitted a writing sample, all these things. And um, a lot of people, the, the purpose of this slide is to show you that um, lots of people apply and to these programs. And uh, often they will say, I really want to do research on handgun um, violence or something like that. Well, it's a noble, uh, certainly a noble um, pursuit. Um, but there's not anybody in the College of Public Health here that is a handgun or is a you know, gun violence person. Does that mean you don't get admitted? Not necessarily, because if you also show, well, I'm also interested in this or that, you show some, some um, facet of being open-minded um, and curious to know about what the rest, what the faculty are doing or what other kind of research projects are going on, then clearly you have, you know, a better idea uh, or a better chance of getting in. Once you get in, the other thing that you, that you don't, that you, that you want to do, again, in this networking vein, is to make sure that you um, are, have looked at what faculty are doing, um, because there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff out there. And, um, you know, we're all sick of COVID, but guess what? There's lots of COVID <laughs> research going on within the College of Public Health. And it turns, and every day, um, you know, like maybe not every day, but every week, somebody will say, well, I just turned in a grant proposal for this or that or whatever. Um, one, of the, one of the most interesting ones happened right away after we shut down. And it had to do with Dr. Reynolds, who's the chair of the um, Community Environment and Policy Department, is a, is a microbiologist. I mean, by trade, she's, uh, wait, I, I can't remember exactly what her degree is, but she's interested in water safety. And one of the things that they realized right away with COVID was that you could find it in wastewater. And um, so one of the things that's going on right now is an, in, in addition to all the other things that they're doing with the, um, with the re-entry to the campus is that they will be testing some of the buildings on campus. So some of the dormitories, et cetera. So they'll be able to see, you know, if there's COVID there. Um, even if they think they've tested everybody, all of a sudden, if it shows up in the wastewater, they know they have somebody in there or more, and they will, you know, attack the problem that way. Um, so what are the strategies for success with this? Well, you know, you're in the program now, so you want to get to know your program faculty. Um, that, you know, on the 21st, Friday the 21st is our... Yeah, is it Friday or Thursday with you guys? You'll be able to meet with your program faculty. Um, I think maybe the MPH are on the 21st. But anyway, you want to start looking at them. And if you haven't already, look at them up and, and see what, what it is that they've um, got experience doing, what kind of research they've done, read their writing, look at their journal articles um, and book chapters, etc. Um, and acquaint yourself with the bibliographies that they have used. That's a really good way to figure out and to kind of get into their heads a little bit about, well, 
how did they um, formulate their thought? And who are they, you know, who are they reading as well? And then the other thing that um, it's really early in, in, in the game here, but we're a major, you know, research institution and there's all kinds of, you know, interdisciplinary um, disciplinarity going on within our, with our faculty, with our students, et cetera, but all kinds of um, different minors that you could, um, that you could add to your, your doctoral degree across campus. I mean, there's some really interesting um, uh, minors that people have had, or you can minor within the, within the college as well. Another pitfall is not paying attention to graduate to college and grad, grad college rules, deadlines and guidelines or opportunities. We are being bombarded right now. You guys are too, I bet, um, with policy changes and you know this program's available and that program's available and tell the students this. Then you find out somebody told them, told you guys the wrong thing. This kind of stuff is just noise. But if you don't read it, you are not going to know um, what what the expectations are. So, what are the um, what's the strategy for success there? Well, it's read your email. No, really, read your email. Um, and. By next, by the end of next week, when we're ready to, you know, wrap up our orientation, you will have your new program handbook. And you need to look at that several times throughout the year. The curriculum guide is really, uh, it's the curriculum that you come in under. Um, you and so for this year, your requirements will stay the same way, you know, what you read now about what the curriculum says at the beginning of the fall 2020 um, semester is the way that you will work toward your degree. It will not change. Um, if it changes, you don't have to go along with the change. You can go to, you can pick a later, um, for instance, if the curriculum changes while you're here, you can actually adopt the newer one if you want to, but it may change everything that you've already taken. You can't um, go backwards, but you could go forward. And we will tell you that when, it, when that occurs. It doesn't happen very often, however. The handbook, however, is a, is a, um, is a publication. <laughs> it's a handbook, so it's basically from the college. But it, um, you know, it talks about the, the college policies, it talks about the, um, about, you know, how to, how to go through your degree program, what to do first, et cetera. Those things actually can change within the year. And so when they change, we make sure that all students know this is a change. It's not, you're not turning this in on, you know, the beginning of the month, now you're doing it at the end of the month, those kinds of things. So the curriculum stays the same for you, but the handbook and um, even the grad college policies and processes sometimes change. They, and they're notorious, I will say, I, I, the grad college is notoriously, um, they're well known for changing policies and not telling us. <laughs> so. We find them out and we're like, wait, that would have been nice if you told us. Um, but we try really hard um, to keep, to keep, you know, everything current. I mentioned this a little bit before. Um, and one of the pitfalls is using your, your fellow students, your family, your psychics as your academic advisors. And I, well, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be totally funny about this because what happens is, um, you know, if Nirali does something and her whole advisors say, I mean, her whole team of advisors and faculty say, this is what you should do, that doesn't mean 
that you should do it because you've got a different situation. It's, it's really not that hard to check in with Michael, to check in with your faculty, to check in with me about certain things. It's not that difficult. So don't, you know, if you hear things, let's talk about it. Check any in and out any information or advice that you get from your fellow students that's not explained in your handbook with the grad coordinator. Say, this is what I heard. Can that be true or whatever? Um, so you, and of course, strategy, another strategy for success is to check in, check in with Michael a couple of times a year. Um, we've been talking about how we're going to be um, providing uh advising as school starts and you will be hearing from us about how that's going to occur going to occur but basically you know a half an hour a couple times a year should keep you in good you know in in a in a good place in terms of um are you doing everything at the right time um you know questioning anything that needs to be that you that you've run into any questions about that? Okay, this is a speed bump. <laughs> what do you think's worse, a speed bump or a, a pitfall? I haven't figured that out yet, but a speed bump is something that's going to slow you up or it's going to, you know, take you off the wheel, off your track for a minute or longer. But switching faculty mentors is definitely something that will slow you up um, unless you've done a couple of things. But you, you kind of want to go through these programs, not kind of, you want to go through them with your eyes open. You want to meet as many people as you can. Um, you're going to be putting your thesis and dissertation committees together. And, um, you know, the more experience or uh you know the more exposure that you've had to somebody you 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 get a feel for what they're like you get a feel for what how they are as a person you get a feel for the kind of research they do um and it's important um as you put these committees together so what do we say well whoa 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 um you're going to thoroughly research your faculty members' interests before doing anything if you think you want to switch, okay? Do not switch in haste. Um, what that means is, you know, people, we're, we're all people. And sometimes if you meet with somebody and they're in a bad mood or they say something to you that doesn't seem right, um, students often come out of those meetings and like, oh, you know, they're really frustrated. They, they think that they're not, um, you know, in, in sync with the faculty member. But oftentimes, you kind of just want to step back and see if that was just a really, you know, a judgment that you had in one situation. If you treat faculty with respect, this is what I've seen. If you, and what do I mean by with respect, you show up, you you have a scheduled meeting, you show up to them, you're there on time, and you don't badger them with emails, they're going to treat you with respect as well. Um, what does that mean about not badgering them with emails? Well, you know, it's sometimes very difficult to get folks to answer. I was, when I turned on my computer here, I had been on a phone call for about 20 minutes. I turned on my computer and there were 35 new emails. You know, I'm, you know, it's really hard sometimes to keep up and, but um, there are different ways to, to, I have a very, I can't touch my computer without it. Yes, I'll use the, so, just remember that when you, what I hear from the faculty, let me put it this way, what I hear from the faculty is they get really frustrated because students will, you know, set up an appointment, take their time on the calendar, and then not show up. 
or show up a half an hour late and just think nothing of it. So, you know, it's a two way street for sure, but um, make sure that you are in good faith doing the thing, do, you know, acting in a manner that in which you would like to be treated. Okay, here's a speed bump. Life surprises can derail you. Um, if it's, you know, it's all kinds of personal things. Lots of times it's a baby, it's a, you know, your love life. You decide, okay, I'm gonna hook up now or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Um, you know, illnesses occur, all kinds of things. And there's a, there are ways to deal with those things um, in, in a way that doesn't, um, doesn't stop the, your career, your academic career. So if something like, you know, something happens when the life's events there, um, let your faculty know, let Michael or me know, um, and tell us what's going on. We've had, you know, we've had students um, in our college right now who've got you know, a, a death in the family from COVID. They've got things going on like that. They've, um, uh, you know, been deployed uh, when they didn't think they would be. So there's a way to connect with resources that we, you know, we can provide them. Others provide all the time. Um, you, there's counseling um, resources that are that are available at the university and, and or that you can um, be referred to outside the university. But most of all, um, people sometimes don't realize, hey, I, you can take a leave of absence and, um, it, and be up, I think it's up to a year you can be gone. And sometimes I've seen them even go longer than that if the situation called for it. The grad college, wants you in the college and the College of Public Health certainly wants you to be successful. So sometimes, you know, these things that happen in life, they resolve, they change in a way that say, okay, it's time to come back. And we want you to have something to come back to. Have I seen, uh, I've seen over the years, a couple of people who just up and left and we never knew why. We never knew why and that's really disconcerting. Um, was it something in the college? Um, was it something in your life? Um, please let us know how we can help. Are there any questions about what kind of a leave of absence you could get? Sometimes, I will tell you this too, um, like I said, if it's a military situation, it's automatic. If it's uh, you know, a medical situation that you just are not able to, you know, be going to school, that's pretty automatic. Sometimes it's even, um, well, you know, here's the deal. I, I've been promoted at work and now, you know, everything changed for me and I, I've got to spend six months doing something different right now. So please remember those things. Okay. Ha ha ha, don't, you know, develop your, your thesis or your dissertation in a vacuum. Um, this occurs all the time, not, not vacuuming up a baby, but, um, but students, after they've been here a while, they kind of tend to think, I need to get out of here, so I am going to sit in a closet and um, develop a dissertation and, and go down the road in terms of this is what I want to do. Only to have that whole idea um, not, you know, thrown out by faculty, but basically it's like, wait, you didn't think this through. How are you going to, um, how are you going to set up a research project that's going to prove what you think it's going to prove or what you'd like to look at, um, all kinds of things. So um, what do we say with that? Again, you, you really need to, um, you know, you don't, as you go along, you're going to want to have 
regular meetings and your faculty advisor and your other faculty mentors. They are what, you know, they will do what they're supposed to do and contribute to your, um, to your thought process. You want to try out your new ideas with them and, you know, accept and utilize feedback to, to hone your ideas. Sometimes students will come out of a meeting and say, they totally nixed it. And then we talk about it and I'm like, it doesn't sound like they nixed it. They, they sound like they said, well, you, you know, you, you got to bring this into it or you've got to um, look at the population that you're studying in a different way or something like that. And you have to open your, open your mind and be, you know, be accepting of the feedback because here, here's the deal. You aren't getting a degree without their, without their support. It's not like uh, an MPH degree where you go and you do all the curriculum and you do everything you're supposed to do. Um, I suppose you could get through an MPH without ever talking to a faculty member. Wouldn't be the greatest thing, but you could do it. But with an MS or any doctoral degree, it's just not going to happen if they um, are not you know, supportive of your ideas. So schedule and uphold your regular checkpoints during the writing process um, and, and during the development process as well. Um, it protects you. Um, I, I would say, you know, I will tell you that over the years, the thing that happen has happened the most and it's not like a lot but it's really significant in my mind and in the students mind is that they get up to to near the end and they can't seem to get it done because they they've not included the faculty in all the pieces and the faculty are saying nope you're not going to go any farther you have to back up and come at you know at this in it from a different viewpoint or something like that. Um, so you want to know about what those viewpoints are all along. You do not want to be the person um, who, you know, who thought they were going to graduate in December and now it's not going to happen until the next December or something like that. Speaking of that, Maureen. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there, is part of our handbook, um, those checkpoints, are they outlined pretty clearly so it won't be a surprise to us? Yes. Um, yes, there are each one of your each one of the handbooks should has a very clear roadmap. But, and I will tell you, if it's not clear, you need to tell us it's not clear. Um, by, you know, asking Michael, okay, is this what this means? Um, Students have tried to come back later and say, I didn't, I didn't know that. And I'm like, here it is in the handbook. Um, but I didn't understand what that means. And, you know, I get it. We, you know, we're people, we write things, we think it means something to, to me. I wrote what I thought, you know, I, I thought I was clear in what I said, but sometimes it just isn't. So, um, you know, we're, we're big enough people to say, let us change it then. But yes, there should be, um, there should be, you know, no doubt in how you're to go ahead with all this. And then, of course, the grad college has all these rules about timing of, um, of um, comprehensive exams and et cetera, that kind of stuff. But on this slide, um, this is what I was talking about. There are people who um, are really good at, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to graduate with a PhD in epi from the University of, of Arizona and um, they are able to go out and kind of, and sell themselves to an, uh, an organization. You know, I want, I'm applying for this postdoc and I'm going to be ready. And then they come back and, and say, I've got a postdoc, I gotta get out of here. That's not the conversation that you wanna 
you don't want to have that conversation in that way by saying, you know, I've got to graduate because I've got this job. It's just not, get, it won't do you good to be, say it like that. Um, and if you ever have trouble like that, please um, come, come see us about that um, because we will help. But you, you want, and, and generally what I would say here, is that by the time you are getting close to graduation, a lot of your faculty will say, well, you know, there's a postdoc open at blah, blah, blah. I mean, they will help you find these positions a lot of the times. But um, so you want them on your side as you're interviewing, you want them on your side as you're, as you want a realistic timetable and you want the faculty to be telling you that it's realistic. Okay, this seems really weird to a lot of people, but it happens all the time. Because once you are taking all your classes and you've, and you have, um, you know, decided on what your dissertation is, you certainly can have these meetings with your faculty online, etc. And so sometimes, you know, hey, again, you know, life Time marches on, a spouse has got a job somewhere, you're saying, I can finish the dissertation anywhere. Well, yeah, that is true, but only, only um, if you've got the full faculty support. And you, and you do, you know, in non-COVID times, you do have to come back in person and um, present. That's at least what we've been talking about lately anyway, even though, We've had some really great dissertations um, happen in the, this, during, in the last five months that have been online. By the way, there is, I think, one tomorrow. Um, actually, I'm not sure about that. But um, uh, so they happen all summer long. Um, there's all these rules about, you know, when, when the dissertation has to be uh, approved by during a semester so that you can say you were graduated. But again, Maureen, they're, they're in, <laughs> they're in the, the handbook or every, no, they're not in the handbook. Grad, grad college uh, publishes the dates every semester. Okay. Again, develop and keep the schedule for regular communication. Um, come to the common understanding of your realistic deadlines and expectations and deliver on them. So many, you know, it's, it's difficult and I'm, I am right there amongst the people who think, here, I'll make my list of four things I can accomplish, but only get two of them done. So you have to keep yourself, um, you know, keep yourself moving and there's nothing wrong with not having the other two done, but you can't, you have to, it helps. It's like, it's like losing weight. <laughs> if you get weighed in every week, then you never can get way off. I never thought of it this way. It's like Weight Watchers. You can never get way off um, track because you know, look, I'm just a little bit away from what I should be, or, you know, I'm doing really great, whatever. Keep yourself on that kind of a schedule. Communicate all the time. You you know, you, well, Skype's almost obsolete, but you use Zoom to meet, um, telephone meetings sometimes. But here, above all else of what I'm saying, do not, as a doctoral or MS student, do not believe that your deadlines are their deadlines or you will have a problem. Um, even if you think that, hey, I've, I work this out the whole time. If you, if, if you run it by a faculty member like, hey, I have to get out of here by December 7th, December 7th is going to come and go and you won't be out of here sometimes. So you want to make sure they get it. Another pitfall is loose perspective. Um, remember, you know, this is not a, this is a, this is a journey. 
but it's also it's not really clear you know at, at every at every um point you've got to be reading you've got to be understanding how you go forward you've got to um you know reassess the information that you have and it's easy to lose perspective it's really really um necessary and you know you to be successful that you gotta maintain the balance in your life i know the one good thing about covid um has been that lots of people are outside a lot more than they than they normally would be not right now when it's like 199 degrees but um but i sure have been doing a lot more walking and hiking um than i ever had time to do before so make time for yourself even when we get back into the <clears throat> you know into in-person stuff pursue your hobbies Cult cultivate your friendships they're really good you know doing these other things keep you keep you out of trouble when you're sitting there and you just cannot think of anything else but what you're working on have fun we we very much um value fun and humor eat well and stick to a sleep schedule i have a really hard time with that but i um i keep trying to use my fitbit for telling me how much rem i'm getting and all this stuff and that only makes me more nervous <laughs> But I do get up and look and say, okay, I got, I got a lot of REM, so I must have had some problems I was working on. Or I got a lot of deep sleep, so my body's, you know, regenerating, stuff like that. But it's try to get as much sleep as you normally, you know, can get on a regular basis. The mother of all speed bumps is scheduling the dissertation defense. And why is that? Uh, the mother of all speed bumps it's because that's your last hurdle that you really you know that's your last bump that you want to go over and um you have to get all these people on um on the same page as far as scheduling a date for having that that presentation and it's difficult especially difficult when faculty like to go to scientific meetings or you know uh <laughs> michael and i were talking about how probably not all these dissertation defenses would be occurring in the summer if it was not for covid because everybody would be you know off doing all kinds of stuff all over the world um but never you know but they're not and they're at they're at home and they're able to serve on these committees uh, not just serve but to attend and participate in the actual defense but okay so one of the um the big things that you want to do is start early um and this is where um, the grad coordinator will really help you understand the policies and the processes and the deadlines but um I didn't say it here, but do not do what lots of people, you know, who think, okay, I, I really, you know, I've got all these interests. So I want to have these five people on my, on my um, committee. Well, five people, getting five people together at one time is a heck of a lot harder than getting four people. So make sure that you are aware of how big your committee has to be. There's nothing wrong with having lots of people, but you got to be the kind of person that kind of is, you know, really flexible about when that dissertation defense is going to be. Um, and so your committee chair and the toughest people, the, the people who are the, you know, like the ones that give you the hardest time about writing or whatever, make sure that they are know about what, um, what you want in terms of a date um, and then work out the timeline as far as submitting drafts. Um, really, really important um, because it's not like you just write your dissertation and turn it in. That's just not what's gonna happen. You've got to 
write it, hand it over. Then they tell you, okay, wait, you use the wrong analysis here. Oh my God, you know, like I gotta go back and do something big like that. Or, um, you know, all kinds of things. But remember this about committee chairs. You are a representative of their teaching. You know, you are, you are absolutely, um, you know, you are a product of theirs. So they don't want you, your chair should never ever agree to a dissertation defense if you're not ready. So that's really why you really want to have them on board with you at, at all times because um, you want that person, even though they're gonna, they're gonna grill you just like everybody else does in a dissertation, you wanna kind of know <clears throat> from, the, from what they've been saying, yeah, you might, you might get a lot of questions about this and you, you better be able to explain why you did something the way you did. Failing to plan for post-graduation. Actually, I would say that this is rarely a problem, but it happens, you know, it does happen more um, every once in a while where, you know, okay, I'm done. But I was so focused on my dissertation that I did nothing in terms of, um, of looking for a job. Um, and so you wanna, it's kind of one of those things where you, you have to keep the balls up in the air until while you're finishing. So what do you think, I mean, what, what, what we say to all students when they come into any program in the college is, uh, and everybody, even the undergrads turn in a, a resume, you want to keep your CV. And if you're, a, you know, if you're going into academ academia, it's a CV that you're gonna have, not just a resume. But you wanna start now look at what you're doing, you know, today or this in the next couple of weeks, you're starting a doctoral program, you need to get that on the on the CV, on the resume right now. Make sure that you develop a great LinkedIn profile because people are looking at, you know, when they start hearing, okay, this is somebody out of this college, they'll look for you. Um, we, 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 uh, suggest that you attend national and regional meetings in your area of discipline. And, you know, I, in, in times of, in normal times, you know, we like to support students going to meetings. We especially like to support students who going to meetings who have posters to present or, you know, they've done an abstract of some sort and are going to present. We do, um, we don't, we fund up to $500 and, you know, with doctoral students several times, it's, you know, we continue to help you figure out how to put, cobble together funding to get to these meetings because that's where you're going to be able to network. Um, and now would be time to start thinking about, okay, you know, I think I'm going to be doing this in biostats. I think I'm going to be doing this in environmental health and start looking at the fellowships out there um, that might, be something you could do that you could apply for when you're done and work toward it. Um, now, in this last year, they, the graduate college has um, hired a, a guy by the name of Joel Morocco or something like that. It's not spelled like the place, but Morocco, who's a, he is the, um, person in the grad college that's been providing career services um, for our, mostly for our MS and doctoral students. And he, he's somebody that you should check out because I noticed he's, he's been doing little programs um, on D2L, et cetera. And they, you know, it would be really good for you guys to um, yeah, you're thinking, I'm, I'm just starting a program. What am I doing looking for a job or thinking about it? Well, you wanna know what kind of things that you'll be able to um, apply to and interviewing skills, et cetera. Um, and so you also wanna meet with our alums. You're gonna have uh, your, I think next Tuesday, you'll be meeting some of the MS and doctoral alums um, next Tuesday, uh, a week from today. Um, 
at this time, I believe, and they're always good. Um, I, I can connect you with alums. Sometimes um, people want to know, hey, you know, I really want to move to the Northwest. What do you, who do you have up there? You know, so, um, you know, I can, we can help in that regard. Normally what happens with alums though is what I say is I'll contact the alum and say, you know, we have a, we have a student who's really interested in this or that. And I, you know, I think that you'd be a really good contact for them and, and ask for their permission um, for you to get in touch with them. Okay. So really, um, I've heard this. I've heard this quote quoted differently um, from Woody Woody Allen. I've also heard like ninety two percent of success is showing up, but this says eighty percent. And I'll go. You know, I'll we can live with that. Sometimes I don't mean just show up, but sometimes you know, when you're not feeling like I don't want to do this or I want to do that, um, just get your buns in gear and get in class and um, all of a sudden you've got something new to think about and new people to, um, to deal with, et cetera. Um, and life changes. It's like, you know, you go to bed at night and things look, I was going to say things look dark, like, because it's dark, but I mean, things look <laughs> like a problem in the morning. It's usually something different. And that's what happens sometimes when you go to class. Um, Anyway, um, okay. What kind of what kind of questions do you have? Anything there that you want to talk about? Hi, Olasola. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank you for the um, presentation. It was indeed. Um, I opening. My question is regarding um, dissertation committee. The what? So, the what? Dissertation committee. Or this committee. What committee? Dissertation committee. Okay, guys, I can't. Dissertation? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So about I want. It? Yes, I want to ask that, how is it assembled? Is it um, assembled at the discretion of the students or the faculty need to um, be involved in the process of selecting the members of that committee? It's your choice, okay? I mean, you, it's not just like, okay, you look at a big, you know, pick a set of pictures on the wall and say, I want that person. You get you have to get to know them and to um, build a relationship with them and you know understand um, their their research. Oftentimes, students do research and do dissertations that are tangentially related to the the faculty's research, etc. But it's nobody assigns you a committee. It's you know as a doctoral student, that's a, a major you know, decision on your part. Does that answer the question? Very well, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. I know I, I've taken a lot of time here and I was supposed to finish earlier, so I'm gonna scoot out of here. I see Brittany DeVito and who else is here, Renee? Who, who else was going to, is that- hey, Chris. Huh? We have Chris. Emily Cooksey. Oh, there's Emily Cooksey. Yes. Um, and I'm going to scoot out and you guys can talk amongst yourselves. These are, these are current students. Um, and please feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Um, and um, I will see you later, guys. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, Chris, before you go, did you say five or file? One plus four is five. That's what I said, five. <laughs> 